Hey everybody, welcome back. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, all new from Anning, 618C Smart, and get a load of this touch sensitive multimeter in the Cheapo Arena. Let's take a look. This multimeter is brand spanking new on the market, only been out for a month and a half, maybe two months. And uh, wow, it is stirring up some controversy. Well, not controversy per se, but a lot of attention. So let's see what all the hoopla is about. The Anning 618C was purchased from AliExpress for a whopping $31 Canadian and free shipping. So definitely in the cheapo zone. What do you get in the box? Well, first of all, you get the box. Nice, hard, good shipping box. You'd be surprised, but when it comes to boxes, it's actually a little bit important because when you're getting this stuff from China or Southeast Asia or wherever they are in the world, it is really nice to have a sturdy mechanism to transport your instrument. So it's much appreciated. I really don't like it when we get stuff in, you know, bubble wrap only or some sort of haphazard approach. Keep up the boxes. As well, you get your nifty, and I mean nifty, little carrying case. Hey, I love it. I love it. Just a plain Jane vanilla little pouch but you know what if you're gonna throw this in the toolbox you definitely want it protected to some degree so nice touch finally we have our digital multimeter operation manual as Anning likes to call it and all in all not a bad little manual at that it's in English and Chinese and it gives you the basic lowdown of what you're getting finally we do get this little handy dandy carrying strap because you can definitely put this whoa in your meter like so and voila looks like one of those transistor radials from the 80s or 70s or you know not like i would know i'm not that old am i the little 618c also has a really nice cover protective cover for the display so let's just gently take that off once again another nice touch from anning definitely good to have all the protection you can because who wants to end up with a new multimeter that has a bunch of scratches on it. Talk about really aggravating. Okay, so the 618C is a touch sensitive multimeter. As you can see, that is what they're claiming. Now, at first you might find it mm, a little bit on the not so sensitive side. It definitely does take a little bit of getting used to, and I'll show you what I mean. Now the meter itself actually has a lot of weight to it. It is not one of these easy breezy light little things like <clears throat> this guy for instance no this meter definitely weighs at least two and a half times not more than that uh, b side it is really solid which was surprising when i took it initially out of the box i wasn't expecting such a heavy meter but that usually is a good sign one of the things i don't like is the fact that really there is no protection so if you drop it per se and uh, you're definitely going to damage it there is no holster or rubberized grip whatsoever um, no in fact the plastics that they've used you know it's really uh, not bad it's kind of fancy um, I like it but in terms of durability it's definitely not gonna take too much to break we compare the anning to say a standard multimeter or even the uh, same sort of look the b-side ADMS 7 um, yeah, it is definitely not a big meter. I can tell a little bit thicker than the B-side. Definitely a lot smaller than the Unity, but uh, overall, fairly nice package. On the ending itself, we take a look. We have our on-off button here. Once again, all of these buttons, you simply put a little bit of pressure on and it will function as per norm. No range selector switch. Obviously, everything is touch screen. Have our frequency capacitance diode continuity volts ac dc all powered by this one part of the uh, on off button finally here we have our hold flashlight and you'll notice we also have the capacitance on the same button ncv or non-contact voltage and if we take a look below kind of a decent touch i guess it tells you exactly what your meter is capable of for a couple of the ranges including capacitance so from one nanofarad to 60 millifarad and for resistance from one ohm to 60 mega ohm. Let's turn the screen on for the first time. 
and there you go. Now you see the temperature is at 28 degrees Celsius. Definitely not 28 in the lab. That is a, I don't know, bug you can call it perhaps, but it takes about two or three seconds for the temperature to actually stabilize to its true value. 20 degrees, definitely that's more like it here. Um, so there you have the screen. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of glare on this uh, display just because it is so, so clean, crisp, transparent. And uh, yeah, I am in a studio here with studio lighting and uh, it is picking up every little bit of glare possible. But um, that might be problematic if you're outside. Uh, so just take that into consideration. But that screen does catch a lot of glare. The unit also ships with uh, your standard test leads. Um, actually, really good size for the meter. Sometimes they oversize or undersize. In this case, it is perfect match for the multimeter. They are rated CAT2 uh, 600 volts, I believe. Let me just, no, I'm sorry, 1000 volts, CAT2. Uh, yeah, and a 10 amp rating. So you might want to take that with a grain of salt. They are not uh, silicone style, but you know what? They're actually fairly nice. They have a pretty soft, supple touch. And in terms of uh, leads that are always connected, these actually aren't half bad. Another nice feature about the display, as you can see, it is a dual display. And look at that, we have a bar graph. And it's sort of an analog bar graph. Now I'm just gonna turn that light out so you get a little better view. And yeah, that is kind of a nice touch. So we have our temperature at the bottom and our main LCD. Another nice feature of the fact is the LEDs actually light up on those buttons as you can see when you touch them. They illuminate for around 10 seconds. Another pretty decent feature, uh, kind of nice. Starting things off with our DC accuracy test, 250 millivolts, and that is what we have spot on. Already now we want to see 2.5 volts. 2.501. Two point five zero zero, even better. And look at that bar graph, as you can see, uh, really nicely done. Hey, so far I like it. All right, so remember this is a smart multimeter. Well, what are they saying when they say smart? Is it because they're gonna break that atom at the CERN particle accelerator? Of course not. Although that would be really cool. No, they're saying that you don't have to manually change the ranges. For instance, DC to AC. And let's try that right now. So we're in DC mode and we are just going to take our test leads, pull it a live 120 volt AC plug. And let's see, I'm not changing anything on that meter. And as you can see, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, 120 volts AC. So that's a nice little touch, not having to fool around with the selector switch. Sometimes if you're in a jam and uh, you just don't want to play around, you don't have to play. It's going to play for you. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Another nice touch is with that dual display. Once again, we have our frequency at the bottom. Uh, once again, we don't have to change any other range or selector switch. We're getting that frequency readout along with the voltage. Next up, we're gonna look at capacitance. Now for this, we do have to do a manual switch over. So we have our cap range here along with the flashlight. Give it a gentle touch and we are now in capacitance mode. Remember this can go up to 60 millifarad. This is a 47 millifarad capacitor. Let's see how Good it is. Here we go. How long will it take? Still in microfarad mode. It's thinking for the lead. 42.3. Yeah, definitely 42 is around what this millifarad is uh, capable of, what this capacitor is capable of, rather. So good stuff. Really didn't take that long. Um, yeah, now why not? Why not try that 100 millifarad? Hey, you never know, right? You never know. Here we go. Will we hit 100 millifarad? This is so exciting. In microfarad mode now. Come on, come on, baby. You can do it, Henning. We're in millifarad. Oh my goodness, it's not gonna work. We are over limit. Ah, too bad, so sad. Hey, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. It really was. Next up, it's diode mode. And we'll start off with a standard diode first. I don't think it should have any problem, but let's find out. Point five five two. Try that one more time. Yeah. So standard diode test. That is a pass. All right, LEDs. Here we go. Starting off with Mr. Green LED, and it is barely lit. And there's the forward voltage drop over to the yellow. 
No problem. Over to the red LED, looking good with a forward voltage drop. Here's the blue. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna be five for five, folks. Yes, we are. Forward voltage drop and all illumination in the cheapo nation. Awesome. Output voltage in dial mode is just under four volts at 3.9 volts. Now you see this sort of wavering back and forth. Um, it's not the BK Precision. No, I did the same test with a few other multimeters, all the same. So that anning is varying that output voltage uh, just by a little bit. Um, not sure why, I haven't seen that before, but uh, there you go. Already Aphrodite, here we go. Continuity, three, two, one. It is latched, fairly loud. There's a lag, probably about a half a second. Oh, not bad, not bad at all. Sixty-eight point nine decibels. The output volume in continuity mode. Eh, not as loud as I thought. Quickly take a look at the uh, bar graph. Always a nice addition to any multimeter. Here we go, and we are cycling up and down, going from 5 to 30 volts. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's definitely not the most responsive bar graph. In fact, it is actually quite slow. So, yeah, wow, that is pretty laggy, probably 2-3 second lag there. So, yeah, it's got a bar graph, but not very responsive. Now, just for the heck of it, I got out the uh, Habo test, and I am doing a bar graph comparison and yeah, definitely that Habo test is a little bit quicker than the Anning for sure. Uh, that Anning is just really, really slow. We're in resistance mode next. This is capable of 60 mega ohm, sitting at the uh, 7 mega ohm marker right now. Let's see. There we are, 7 mega ohm. Let's see how fast it is. 9 mega ohm. Six mega ohm, three mega ohm, one mega ohm. Yeah, fairly fast to range. 1.2, 1.21. All in all, yeah, it looks like fairly decent little resistance guy. 10 mega ohm, 1% resistor, looking good. 511K, 1%, nice and close. Finally, we have an 8.25 ohm, 1% precision clad resistor here. Now, with this anning, if it goes below 50 ohms, you're going to have that continuity beep or buzzer sound. So let's see if that's going to happen. Here we go. Remember, this is 8.25 ohm. Showing us 8.6, and there's that continuity sound, obviously. So yeah, anything under 50 ohms, you're gonna hear this buzz. Cut! <sighs> That's so loud. Unfortunately, when it comes to frequency, uh, the anning is a fail. Can't really do much better than around 2.6, 2.7 megahertz. Sitting at three megahertz right now, and it just whacks right off. I'll bring it back down to 2.6 and we're okay. 2.5, yeah, not an issue. So for whatever reason, a uh, little inning is not very reliable in the frequency department. Finally, we're in non-contact voltage mode, NCV. So, yeah, you know what? It's okay. I won't say it's hypersensitive. It's either got you or it doesn't, so to speak. But, uh, yeah. Finally, it has a flashlight uh, on the back of the unit. You just depress the flashlight button. And, yeah, now it's really dim. Definitely uh, not going to do you much good unless it is completely black. Because that is a really dim light. But it is there. Yeah. Get into the back of the battery. You have one Phillips and it goes into a nice brass threaded insert. Good stuff. As you can see, there is the two AAA batteries powering this little bundle of joy. Let's dig in a little bit further. And looking at the back, no shielding. Hey, no surprise. 
Already going in a little bit further, starting off with our battery housing. Uh, a little bit interesting design. You can see here we have a solder blob and that is connecting to the uh, pin out on one of the battery terminals. Uh, interesting. And another solder here for the other terminal, the positive and the negative. So yeah, that guy is in there permanently, but you know what? Hey, it works. It's not going anywhere. And yeah, albeit a little bit interesting, I have no complaints. Now, if we take a look at those input jacks, the, not the jacks, I'm sorry, but the leads rather, um, nice thick gauged wire. I really like that. And they're soldered in there really, really good. They're not going anywhere. And if we look at the strain relief as well, look at that. Yeah, really, really nicely done. So, I mean, all things considered, we have some good thick gauged wire here and some really decent leads attached to this little beast. So let's move down the line, shall we? Remember, this guy does not do current. No current, so no current shunt. But we do have uh, one little only PTC for the voltage side of things. And you know what I noticed? Kind of cool. A couple of electrolytic caps over here, and those are actually Rubicon 10 volt, 470 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitors. So a couple of Rubicons, uh, always a good thing. When we go up the board a little bit further, we see the main IC over here is cobbed. And uh, look at this, we also have another one. This is an ARM Cortex. That's a 48 megahertz, uh, eight kilobytes of RAM. This little guy is part of the ARM Cortex family. Little processor runs up to, I believe, around 48 megahertz. So a uh, kind of a neat little subset of on-chip peripherals that it's capable of running. So nice. Only at the top, you can tell that NCV is embedded in the uh, PCB itself, no protruding extrusion as I like to call it, no metal filament coming out. Always preferable to have that metal filament coming out because you're going to definitely get better um, NCV, but in this case, once again, it's part of the PCB. Finally over here we have the LED, that is for the flashlight. You can see it really, really tiny, it definitely does not give off a whole lot of luminescence. All in all, nice and clean design, uh, really good attention to detail and uh, some nice components as well. Okay, gonna put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning touch sensitive smart multimeter. Hey, you know what? I actually like this little guy. Honestly, was not expecting much when I ordered this thing, but wow, it really surprised. This thing is definitely heads and tails over this piece of junk. And I gotta say, I am really now happy some good quality components inside the overall build quality is high end quite surprisingly for $30 cheapo uh, this anning definitely continues to put a smile on my face the display itself is nice and clean and yeah it is a little bit buggy in terms of the frequency but I'm gonna let that one slide uh, but hey you know your mileage may vary if that's important you might want to consider something else other than that it seems to be quite accurate and overall I think this is a great addition to that glove compartment or toolbox if you need something to pull out in a quickie. Good looking meter and it really performs admirably. The Anning 618C gets a solid four out of five stars. Yeah, awesome. Finally, a smart multimeter that actually isn't that dumb. Gotta love it. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Plenty more coming. It's gonna be a great summer. Until the next one, keep on testing. Finally, we have our piezo or speaker over here. And as you can see that NCB, it's just embedded in the PCB itself. No extrudy, extrudy, bleh, can't even tell you.